What's up, everybody? We got a weekend stream here today because my Ender 6 has finally died. And by died, I mean the stock control board is, is gone. Um, the Z motor doesn't work well. Um, it randomly shuts out, um, or shuts off, I should say. So, as promised, once it died, I'm going to do a stream on it. So the plan today is um, we're going to take this brand new EasyBoard V2. We got here in its nice little protective wrap. Brand new. I'm going to open it up. Mm, break that seal. And then we're going to see what's involved with putting this guy into the Ender 6. Now, this video is going to serve as an instructional guide, so I'm not going to be answering any questions that are unrelated to this. Um, so if you guys do have questions regarding this and the Ender 6, uh, save them for the end because um, I want this to be a nice replay for people to watch who are putting the board in the printer because this printer is going to be a little bit of a different animal. We're going to be checking uh, to see where the end stop signal wires are. It might be plug and play, it might not be, but the difference with the standard printers that this board is usually going into is that they don't have the weird breakout board set up. Um, and the one difference with my machine here that I did because I had problems with the breakout board is my hot end thermistor lines and my hot end power lines are not going through that breakout anymore. So that will differ slightly, but I will point out, um, where the stock wires are, um, or were. I can't remember if I just left them in there and moved them out of the way, or if I snipped them off of the harness, but other than running the thermistor and power lines for the hot end directly from the hot end back all the way to the control board. This machine is pretty well standard in terms of what you're going to see on your printer. So we're just going to get right into it. Um, I have my EasyBoard V2 here that I just opened up. Um, I might, I don't know. Uh, we'll see maybe on another stream, but we'll see how much time I have. I might be putting one of our MOSFETs in for the bed just to take the load off of the control board because the bed does pull a decent amount of heat but our board handles high ramp beds you know what we recommend a maximum of 13 amps on the actual bed draw um and i believe the ender 6 is under that but i typically will like to put um a external bed moss set on most printers just to prolong the life of the board and also these are designed to handle really high amps this is a 30 amp moss set that we sell so in theory, it should have less voltage drop than going through the board. Um, I did actually print up our little case we have for our MOSFET. This actually is one I designed myself. Um, so yay. Um, and the way that works, just in case you guys haven't seen our MOSFETs, and this STL is included when you purchase the MOSFET from. If you went and bought a similar MOSFET from a Chinese site, you, you don't get the STLs. We have them for customers only. But um, we have this. So this goes in here. You have the little standoffs that come with it. You pop this in. And you get a nice little access door here for the um, for the terminals. And we have a little hole here to route the wire out. So it's a nice compact setup. And this just bolts to 2020 extrusion, um, which most printers have um, at this point that you'd be putting this in. So you, nice little case. I'm just going to show this off here because I actually like it a lot. Um, yeah, so you put your control wire through. You put your MOSFET in. Oh, hang on. Put your MOSFET in. Why am I having so much trouble with this today? It feels like a Monday, but it's not. It's a Saturday. So there we go. I can plug my control wire in to the header there. Pull the extra wire down through. And then just like that, I have a MOSFET in a case where I can put my, my power in, hook my bed up, and then the lid just snaps right on. And there's a little lift there so you can get to it. So a nice little case to put the MOSFET in. Um, and then there's four screw holes here um, to screw M3s into the bottom of it. So anyways, might I might be putting this on there. It really depends on time. The board, this board does not need it. This is just something I like to do on my printers. So anyways, enough rambling. Um, I am going to do timestamps on this video. So people can switch around. So we're going to switch over to the arm camera here. <laughs> And I apologize for my voice. I'm, it's, it's almost back to normal um, after being at uh, Rocky Mountain, but it got torn up pretty bad from talking uh, so much. One thing I will say, so I did just clean this. This printer was dirty. A um, couple of prerequisites to doing this board. You need to have our LCD kit. So if you don't have our LCD kit, you cannot use this control board in your printer. 
Um, we actually just did a price cut on all our LCD kits, so these are under $40 now for the screen and the housing and everything. Um, the other caveat with this printer because of how Crayley did is the SD slot is actually on an extension um, that's plugged into a header on the board. So this stock SD slot will not work once we do the conversion. If you print over Octoprint or if you're using Clipper, um, the SD slot really doesn't matter. But I do have this. I found this in my drawer. Um, you can use an extension. Now, the thing you have to be careful with the extensions, if you grab them, you can destroy the SD slot on any board that these are plugged into. So be careful with this. I might just have this so it's like stuck down here. I might also take this apart and see if we can like mount this in the stock location here. I doubt it's going to fit right away, but the extension would be a good way. You can just stash this under the printer. So if you need to update the firmware, you have easy access to the SD slot without having to open the whole printer up. So without further ado, I'm going to find my, my Allen key here that I was using uh, because I actually went over this printer before we started, cleaned it all up. I noticed all of these panel screws were all loose. Um, which was making the printer vibrate. So if you guys have had your Ender 6 for a while, go over the screws on the panels and tighten them back up. Um, that's where a lot of my noise was coming from. Um, where did I put my, my Allen key? <laughs> oh, it's over here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. I'm going to hide my head cam here um, just because... Nobody wants to see that. You guys want to see the printer. You guys are here for the printer and seeing me do printer stuff. So you don't need to be looking at my bald spot while I'm working on the printer. All right. I'm going to tip this on its left side here. All right. And we're going to take the bottom panel off. So you've got eight screws on here. There's two on each side. Um, this is my USB cable that's plugged into the current board. I think this is a micro USB, so I'll be switching this out for a mini USB. If you guys have bought the new EasyBoard V2 Plus, um, the V2 Plus is just the V2, and we now include a 4 gig micro SD card and a mini USB cable uh, for it's only about five bucks more than we were selling them for. Um, so I'm going to be switching the cable out, but we need to take these screws out of the bottom here. I don't know where my little magnetic screw holder doohickey went. Um, it's way easier to just do them by hand once they're loose. Because they are very long. In hindsight, I probably should have grabbed my drill so I could just zip these out really quick. Now maybe it is quicker to use the Allen key. Either way, we're getting the screws out. Uh, this cable here is actually the USB cable for my easy cam that's in the printer. So the plan here is to get our Unified 2 firmware working on it. And then I'm, since we are doing more documentation and stuff um, with Clipper firmware, I probably am going to be playing with Clipper on this printer um, since it is a Core XY and I can go, you know, faster speeds than a Cartesian machine. So the goal is to get up to speed on all the Clipper stuff so we can help our customers out that have issues. So right now, effective immediately, if you guys buy an easy ABL, um, and you know, let's say your printers are, you you got clipper on your printer, it's running without a sensor, um, and you need help with the easy ABL, our support does cover that. And it's only for the probe. So meaning if you buy an easy ABL kit, um, and you need help setting up the bed leveling portion, um, that is covered under the technical support. But if you're setting up clipper from scratch at the same time, while installing the kit, our support will not cover the entire clipper install. Now we do have paid support. So if you need help, we can help you, but um it's the support is limited to the product itself so anything with the the bed leveling but anyways so you can see here um i have some cables here that i'm not using so you can see th1 and this is what i was talking about i here oh apparently my hopefully my internet's not screwing up that would be uh, that would be a kicker wouldn't it and i uh finally do the stream and then my comcast screws up um so on your guys printer um, you'll probably have these all connected. So this is TH1. This is your hot end heater. This went to the port right here originally. Um, this was the plug for the uh, the BL Touch, which obviously we're not using on here. It didn't come with a BL Touch, but it had this header. So this one we don't use at all. Um, I am using a pin off here for our Easy Neos. Now, because the Easy Board has support for the easy neos 
um, I actually could plug the the easy nail kit right into it but since i already have the step down installed i'm probably just going to leave it to be honest um and then just go to the signal pin on the easy nail header if that makes sense so you can see here i got the little step down it goes to the control or goes to the power supply takes the 24 volts down to five and then that's how we're powering the uh the easy nail strip so i'm probably going to keep that if you if you already have an easy nail kit, or if you don't already have an easy nail kit and you're doing that at the same time um you can plug it right into the board. Now, the cable length on the Easy Neo comes right here, so you would need the extension. We do have extensions in our shop. Which I'm, I have one here. So we have little extension wires here. They're a couple bucks, which if you have the under six, you want to do the Easy Neos with the Easy Board V2, you can just get this extension, and then it'll reach down to the board. Just a little 200 millimeter extension. Um, and this is nice silicone wire, and it's pre-made, so it's plug and play. All right, so let's get into this. So I just, like I said, I wanted to point out differences on my build versus what you're going to see. Um, I do have here, so if you notice, there are two sets of wires going into the hot end output. And the thing you have to pay attention to when you're, when you're working on this printer, because they do share power lines. Um, hang on one second. you have to make sure the positive and negative are correct. If you do not put the positive and negative correct, you will damage things. So before you start, I would recommend taking a picture of your machine um, and making sure that you know what is positive and what's negative. So you can see here, even though I bypassed the, the heater wires on that breakout board, I still have them connected. They're just into the same crimp ferrule. This one right here is your bed connection. This is your, um, this is your always on fans. So this actually goes down to the little 4020 blower fan right here, which I'm going to check. I think mine's okay. We do actually carry these now. Um, this one feels like it's okay. But those will all basically be a direct replacement. The thing I need to check here um, when we do this is where the X and Y end stops um, hook up. Because if you notice, there's only one, there's only one wire here on, I think this is the X stop. Yeah, it is. So there's only one wire here. So we got to make sure that this wire is on the signal pin side of the easy board. Um, and I'm going to check here. So let's see. So I got that the signal pin side. So we look at our control board here. Um, the easiest way is to look at which one is on the ground plane. And on this case, it's the one to the right. So if I'm looking at that from up top, it looks like ours does match where the signal pin is. So. That's good news. That means we can unplug these and plug these right in. So that that was the main thing I was concerned about. And like I said, these shared wires. So this actually looks like it's going to be a pretty quick installation. So let's go ahead and disconnect everything. I'm going to take my micro USB out of here and I will be fishing a mini USB through because I do use Octoprint with this. And eventually, like I said, it will be used with Clipper. Um, but we're not doing Clipper today. We are going to get this officially supported on Unified 2 firmware. Um, so that way you guys can just have an easy installation. Um, I'm going to take the LCD housing off over here so I can get the USB cable taken out because I had a micro USB because that's what this board has. And we need a mini USB for the easy board. We did mini USB because that's what Creality Printer used to use. Um, and it's also just a more robust connector. Um, the micro USBs are a lot easier to break. And I need a Phillips here to take the LCD off. Yeah, I had, so my apprehension of being like, oh yeah, this is supported. I like that, I'm not like these other companies where we will just assume things work. I want to know they work because I don't want my customers to have a bad experience, um, if that makes sense. So I want to be able to personally say, yes, I have tested this on this printer and I have personally vetted it. Uh, you know, there's too many companies out there these days that half-ass their stuff, and I don't want to be one of them. Um, you know, and I hope hope you guys appreciate that. I am emptying out this bin of screws here so I can use my magnetic bin. All right, so I'm going to put all my screws in here so I don't lose them. Okay, so I'm going to take the LCD housing off so I can get the cable out. 
I'm going to disconnect the LCD cable from the board. We're just basically going to unplug everything from the board here. Um, like I said, take a picture of it before you start. I'm actually going to disconnect the SD extension here completely and remove it. Um, all right. Do you guys think I should keep the step down or take this out and use the extension? What do you guys think for the easy Neo? Should I just go right off the board and just disconnect this extension or just leave it since it's already in here? All right, so E0 is marked, so I'm going to take that off. Um, it, there is hot snot on them. You guys see that? There's hot snot on there. Use the Neo plug. Okay, so I will take it out. What, what do you guys think? Should I keep the step down in there from the stock board, or should I put the... I know Tor wants me to use it, but Tor Tor's also like an insider. So, it might be a little biased. I put my own hot snot on there. And overall, despite the, the board going out, this has been a pretty decent printer. If you have a later revision of this printer, you actually have uh, technically inferior drivers on your uh, Z and E axis. They switched out from Trinamics. Mine has all Trinamics, and the problem is they keep shutting off. So... Yeah. Now, if you guys did, I don't know. I don't think Creality actually made a BL Touch kit. If you guys actually did use the Creality uh, BL Touch on here, I'm assuming you guys are not. Um, but these are the two signal pins. These can go off of the... Uh, these can be taken off of here and put onto your Z end stop and then the servo header of our board. Uh, but we're not going to go over that because we don't deal with the BL Touches. I don't even know if they made a BL Touch kit for this printer. Um, I haven't seen it. So... But if you do have a BL Touch or want to use a BL Touch for some godforsaken reason, um, you can uh, you can just run the wires right back to the board. Now, here's another situation. Remember I talked about they share wires here? Do you see this? So the negative wire of the K-Fan is, is the only thing there. They're pulling the positive from this wire here. That's why I said this positive and negative matters. Um, and I believe, so K-Fan is your layer fan. I believe our header is the same orientation. It is, so it is plug and play. So this will go to fan one. So this K fan will go to fan one on our board. And the hot snot is trying to take the header off. All right. The hot's not out of there. Oh, well, you see it pulled the header off. It's stuck to the plug. That's why I'm not a fan of the, the hot snot on here. But I can push it back on the board. Again, this board is uh, on its way out. It's going to go in my bin, so I have it. Because it's still good enough to test firmware on. If we have like a question about firmware builds, so I'm not going to throw it out. But it's not that great. All right, so that's the X. It's labeled on mine. Um, y is labeled as well, and I'm assuming Z has a Z label on there. I'm going to take that out. So it looks like right now, as long as you make sure you have positive and negative correct, um, and you don't mind not having access to the SD slot directly. Now, you could just leave the bottom off your printer. Um, it, actually, on this printer, it wouldn't hurt anything to leave the bottom off um, to get access to the SD slot. Me personally, I don't care because we use Octoprint on all the printers. Um, you know, and if you guys are Clipper people, you guys know that um, it doesn't matter uh, because you're printing over the network. You're not using an SD card for anything other than occasional firmware updates. So we're going to disconnect all this. I'm just double checking that these are labeled positive and negative. They are. You see here, fan plus, fan minus. So these are labeled. So now we're just going to take everything out. And if you guys have not already, you guys notice I have crimp ferrules on all my wires here. We sell these. They're like 20 bucks. Highly recommend doing that because this board has 10 wires and it's a fire hazard. Um, and I'm not exaggerating. It is legitimately a fire hazard. All these tiny, most, not all, most of these Chinese printers tend the damn wires and it, it's a fire hazard. So if you are watching this and you have not gone over your printer yet, um, I highly recommend you do and get rid of any tinned wires you find because one day you could wake up to smoke detectors going off, um, you know, and your, your printer could be toast.
And we don't want that. I want people to be safe. China doesn't care because they know you can't sue them. All right, so we're going to take the board out. Oh, I just realized you guys noticed the Y header came with it because of the hot snot. <laughs> I just noticed that. There it is. It didn't want to go. Let me pop the hot snot off here. Um, one thing I do do sometimes to get the, the fucking glue off here is I will take my, my heat gun on a low temperature and just kind of wave it past all the connectors and it's enough to soften the glue up where it's easy to get it off. If that makes sense. So, but if they come off, you can literally just line them back up. And press them back on. All right. There we go. And I think there's one more screw, yep, in the corner here. And from what I'm told, the our easy board should bolt right into here. Thank you, customers who have reported that. Okay. So now we're going to take our easy board and we're just going to put it back in. I'm going to double check that all these holes line up. I believe they will. Or at least enough of them. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they line up. So, all right. Let's get to it. So I am going to put timestamps in this video because there is going to be some uh, trial and error and testing. I'm going to basically be live testing, setting up the firmware on here. But for those of you watching and you're, those of you that are going to be using our Unified 2 firmware, which is most of you, um, shortly after this video, so about an hour after this video is done, um, I will be pushing the update to our GitHub. So if you guys have an Ender 6 and you have followed this guide, um, swapping it out and made all the proper connections, you will be able to easily update your Ender 6. And again, you need our LCD kit. We will not and cannot support the stock LCD. So if you don't have the LCD kit, um, you'll want to go ahead and pick that up. This one screw here, though, is like slightly off. I don't know if it's just my machine here, but I'm going to see if I can get this in. If I only get three of the four in, it really doesn't matter. Oh, I think I can get it to go in. There we go. Any of you guys that have swapped this out, was your one screw kind of hard to get in? These other ones went just fine. All right. It's going to be so nice to have this thing actually print reliably and not freak out. It's been acting up with the stock board for, uh, I want to say, about two or three months now. And finally, it just the, the, Z, the Z just stopped moving after about, I don't know, five minutes or so. All right, so since... I'm going to look and see. Use the plug. Okay, so you guys want me to do more work. All right, well, this will be easy. I'm just going to snip. These are into a ferrule for the ABL power. I'm going to snip these, and I'll set this little step-down adapter aside for another project. You guys just like seeing me do extra work, don't you? So there we go. There's my step-down. This is what we call a universal power kit. It basically... Gives you a 5 volt step down and uh, jumper wires to go ahead and make the connection to your Easy Neos if your board doesn't have an Easy Neo um, or NeoPixel header, um, which the stock reality board doesn't. But you can use a free IO pin, which I showed doing this on another stream. All right, so I'm going to plug that and I'm going to need the extension. So I'm going to plug the extension in now. So that'll go right into the board. So we're going to start. Hooking everything up right after this moment from our sponsor. Hi there, Frank George here. As a doctor, I know a thing or two about probing. <laughs> Indeed I do. I love something that's easy to install, easy to use, and backed by a real support team. And that's why I choose TH3D Easy ABL Kit for my 3D printers. I prefer not to waste countless hours trying to figure out how to connect things to my machine when I could be printing instead. With the TH3D Easy ABL, you get technical support, easy to use firmware, quality parts, amazing accuracy, and there's no moving parts. What are you waiting for? Head over to their site at easyabl.th3dstudio.com and get one today. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy printing.
The EZ-ABL kit is meant for 3D printer usage only, not for medical or rectal use. And we're back. Today's sponsor is us. Um, all right, so I'm going to take the SD slot out of here. I am going to see if I can make an adapter where you can like print apart and take these extensions like out of their plastic housing. Um, but for now, I'm just going to shove it through and have it hanging out there just so I have access to it. So um, I'll put a link in here. As much as I hate Amazon, this is probably the best place to get them from. So I'll put a, I'll put a link in the video description once I'm done if you guys want to use these. Um, is this something you guys would want us to carry? Because I can source these as well from our suppliers. Um, but you can see here, this goes from a micro SD to an SD slot. So I'm wondering here, and that's why I'm going to take this off, if I can just stick this in here and have it line up with the factory one. So we're going to, we're going to check that out right now. A little bonus here. So I'm going to take the stock one out because this is not going to do anything. And we're going to pull that out. And I'm going to see, will this fit between there? It will not. But if I take this out of this case, this is a plastic case here. I'm assuming I can pop this open. I think that's actually why I bought these, because I have a couple of them in my, my bin. Um, oh, yeah. You just kind of pull up on here. Look at it. It comes out. I think I could probably design something to put this in the stock location. What do you guys think? Because there's that. I think I think I could do it. Yeah, I, I think I could do that. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think I can make a thing where you just take this out of the stock housing. They do include adhesive. Put that on there and stick it to the bracket. What do you guys think? Yeah? Okay. You better use my affiliate link. If you buy the adapter. I'll put I'll post it in I'll I'll post it on the video description later, the exact one I'm using here. Because I know these work. I have tested these. Um I know these particular ones work. And I actually I have actually already talked to our suppliers. We can get these in the same exact brand. How does this go back in? I'm gonna put this back in this stock housing for now so I don't damage it. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here for now. I'm just gonna feed this through. So this goes down into the base. I was gonna have that hanging out there. And then I'm gonna grab, grab my mini USB cable that comes with the EasyBoard V2 Plus. So if you guys bought a V2 Plus, your invoice says V2 Plus, you should have got a USB cable and an SD card. And the, uh, the SD card is a micro SD since that's what our board has. You can use that with an adapter. I'm sure you guys have micro SD adapters laying around from years of buying cards and never using the adapters. <laughs> oh, actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to fish this through just yet. I'm going to put this through the slot here on the housing. And just have this hanging out for now. And plug the LCD cable back in. I'm gonna put my micro or mini USB in here to go to the board. And pull that all through. It looks sloppy now, but we will get it cleaned up. I was actually not expecting that uh that SD extension to be able to be so small that we could pop it in there. Uh, one thing you could do is also just stick it on the side here, but I'm going to, I'm going to make a mount for it because I think that would look nicer. All right. So for now, I'm going to stick this back on here. And I'm just going to put two of the screws in here on the bottom 
uh, because I am going to take this apart later and do the design for the uh, the SD extension to stick to on the stock location. So we're just going to put one screw in so the LCD doesn't flop off. How's that? I lied. I'm going to do two. And then after this is all hooked up, I'm going to power it on, make sure nothing lets out the magic smoke. And then I will switch over and we're going to do some firmware development. And like I said, you guys will not need to do anything other than download the firmware and put it on the board. I'm going to do all the hard work for you. So, all right. Now for the SD extension, if you guys are using this, the gold pins go down. So that goes in here. And like I said, be very careful with this. I have had people where they use these on their boards and they hit this and it tears the slot off. Be very careful. It's one of the reasons we don't recommend using SD extensions. In this case, obviously, it's not going to go anywhere. But I just want to make, make it known to be very careful because you can ruin the SD slots if you're not careful. So I'm going to tuck this out of the way here. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to make the board connections now. So we're going to start with our thermistor connections. And again, I ran separate wires for my thermistors. If you guys did not do that, which most of you probably didn't, um, you're going to plug the TH1. So you see TH1 here? That's going to go into the E-temp. So Matt, that, that would just go right here into the E-temp. I bypassed mine and ran new wires for my thermistor because it made my temperatures more stable. Um, I was getting interference. So... Now we're going to want to plug in the heater lines and we, we have to get positive and negative crit. So on our terminals here, and they are labeled, it's going to go as follows. So just, just follow my, my directions here. So this is our hot end output. So this is negative, positive, and then same thing for the bed. Negative, positive. And then same thing for the always on, negative, positive. And they are labeled. If you look here, there are labels on the silk screen. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. Just going to hook the bed ones up. And then TB here, this is your bed thermistor. That goes to the B temp header on the EZ board. Again, make sure positive and negative are correct. So fan, plus and minus. So on this, the yellow wire is your positive and these are labeled. And the blue is your negative. I have these into crimp ferrules. You guys see how nice it is to work with crimp ferrules? Or crimp ferrules? You just pop them in. It's so much easier to work with. And it's safe. Unlike the stock setup, which is all tinned wires. Okay, and then on here, we have the main power input. This is your positive. This is your negative. Positive, negative. So I'm going to unscrew these. And put the black in the negative. And then the red and the positive. I believe it's the same orientation on the stock board. Because we tried to match the stock board as close as possible when we designed these to replace the Corealities. All right, same thing for the hot end. You got to make sure we match positive and negative. Now, you will not have these white wires. Um, you will just have these two. I have the white wires here because I ran my hot end wires separately. So it reduces interference. It gives me better temperatures. I'm also running the 50 watt heater as well in my stock hot end. And I don't want to be putting that higher load through the uh, the stock electronics. So you can see here, I got the red wire going to the positive terminal and the black wire going to the negative terminal. All right. Now it's time to hook everything else up. So I'm actually going to get my SD extension out of the way here because it's kind of in the way here. We'll just move this out of the way for now. 
And you still have to push it in like an SD card. Otherwise, you will screw up the mechanism of the slot by just eating it out. All right. So we got our Easy Neos here with the extension hooked up. That's going to go right into the Neo Pixel header, which is the three pin header next to the five pin one. So I'm just going to plug that in. I'm going to plug my mini USB in up top here. And then I'm going to pull the extra cable because we want as much cable out of the printer as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and just push this into here and pull it through. So we take up the slack there. I'm going to plug the LCD cable in, which is, this is the TH3D LCD kit. This board will only work with our LCD kit. I don't know if you guys still have the stock uh, LCD on your printer. Um, I don't know why. Our kit adds so much more function. All right, so now I need to hook the motors up. So this guy here is the Z. So that goes into the Z plug here. Um, and there's some hot snot on here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it off. So make sure you guys take the hot snot off the plugs before putting them in, because sometimes it will prevent them from fully going in. So it doesn't matter which Z plug you plug them into. These are connected in parallel, so you can run dual motors off of there. Um, E0 is your extruder, so that goes into the E port on our board. And then we have the DET, which is the filament sensor. Um, I just realized that there's no color, but there is a uh, there is a thing on here. And I'm going to cross-reference with the stock board. So, because our header here for our filament sensor, it can go either way. Uh, because the Creality sensor wiring is inverse from ours. So if we see here, we have signal, ground, and 5 volt on here. And if I look on here... On the back of the board, the stock board. So we see VGS. Okay, so VGS from top to bottom here. So to figure out how we plug this into our control board that we're replacing, we're going to look at the plug. Okay, so if I plug this in and look at it. The DET label on mine is on the V. So I need to just line up the DET with the 5 volt. So you can see here it's 5 volt ground signal from bottom to top. So mine is going to go on here. So if you look at your plug here, it's going to go on this direction to the header. Make sure this is correct. If it's not, you can damage the board. Um, the X minus here, this is going to go to the X stop port. So you see here we have two fan ports. Let me move the printer. So we have the fan one, fan two. I'm not going to be using fan two in this build. Um, fan two is the controller fan. So you could run... Um, so these two wires here go to this fan in the control box. You could run this off of the second fan header, and it'll turn it on and off when the printer turns on and off. I have this on an easy plug, so I don't care, but that's what the fan 2 is for, is for to cool the board. Um, I'm just going to leave it as a stock configuration, which is it runs all the time. All right, so X stop goes into there. K fan, this is our layer fan right here. Again, pull the hot snot off. Let me, uh, let me lock the focus on here because it's not... Focusing how I'd like it to. There we go. Uh, so K fan goes into fan one here. And then we have our Y. Which goes into the Y. And then we have the Y stop here. So we look at here, Y minus. Goes into the Y stop. And then we have TH1 left, which this we're not using on my build because again, I ran my own bed temp or my own hot end temp wire. So if the, you did the same thing, you don't use this. Um, if you didn't do this, then TH1 goes into the E temp. And then Z minus will go into the Z stop, but we have an easy ABL on here. So all I'm going to do is plug my easy ABL signal cable into here. So if you see, I have a couple things not used. So I have my, so if you have an easy ABL on here, you're not going to have the Z-stop connected. Um, if you ran a separate temperature wire uh, because you wanted more stable temperatures, this will not be used. And then this is good for the uh, the BL touch port on the breakout board, which is not used either. So do not plug that into here. Just leave this disconnected. So at this point, oh, that is my focus ring. It is It turns into the focus ring when I'm in manual focus i gotta hit this button here to zoom out so at this point i have everything hooked up i'm gonna go ahead and reconnect oh i lied <laughs> I'm, it might help if i have an x hooked up 
I don't know. I don't know about that. You guys think it'll run without the X hooked up? Um, <laughs> it fell down here. I can, didn't see it. Um, so we're going to plug that into the X. And now at this point, uh, everything I need to have hooked up is hooked up. So I'm going to pop the SD extension back in here. Um, right here. So we're going to put the, plug this in. All right. So at this point, I'm done with the wiring. We're going to switch over to doing firmware. So at this point, is going to be the kind of boring part um, because I'm going to be having to do some trial and error and figuring out the config so you guys don't have to. Um, so I'm going to put the printer right side up. Um, and I'm just going to leave it open for now. I'm going to power it on and make sure that we have the screen turning on and the fans turning on. Um, it will say test firmware on the screen. So I'm going to plug this in. And if I didn't do anything wrong, we should get uh, our logo on the screen here. The easy nail is turned on. So we have uh, we have the screen turning on. Um, my fan my fan up top's on. My fan on the bottom's on. So this all looks good. Now I got to do the firmware. So we're gonna switch over, and we're gonna do the firmware. So if you guys are rewatching this, you can skip the firmware portion unless you want to see how I did the development. I'm gonna go here, and I got to make a copy of my firmware, and we're gonna do some development work here. And like I said, if you guys are watching this on the replay, you don't need to watch this portion unless you actually want to see how I did the firmware. All you'll have to do is flash it. So let me go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to assemble a test folder for the EasyBoard V2. My computer's building that folder for me right now to work out of. And I'm going to open up VS Code again. Um, once this is done, if, after you guys are done watching this video, we will have the firmware release on our website so you can use the easy firmware to compile it all right so i have here um, my firmware here and we're going to go ahead and start building for the ender 6. so to do that i'm going to need to add in um, a configuration line here so we're going to do the uh, ender 6 i'm going to put a note here just like we have with the other one i like having my line my lines aligned. So that's at column 26. <laughs> Just going to put a note here that it requires the LCD kit. Um, I'm also going to add it here because the under 5 plus also needs that. So I just put a little note there. All right. Let's go ahead and start doing the code. Now, on this printer, I'm going to need to add in the Ender 6 OEM mount for those of you running the stock one. I think it's Ender 6 OEM. I'm going to see here. There's Ender 6 Pets Fang, Ender 6 OEM. Yep, that's what I called the sensor mount. Put a little comment here. And I'm going to actually be using a custom probe mount because I'm using the pet sphinx. Oh, actually, I already have the under six pet sphinx in here. So I, I have that. That's what's installed in this printer. So I'm not using the stock um, cooling setup. I have the under six pet sphinx. So I'll, I'll put that in here for you guys. So under six. All right. And now I need to go ahead and start doing the config for the actual board. So... Or scroll down in here. We have this all in one, one big mess of printer. So, do Ender six, and we need to start setting things up. I'm just gonna uncomment my options I have here because we have the Easy Neo. Um, I have the Tough Extruder V2 on here, so I'm just setting my options for my printer. And then I am going to want to play with input shaping. Um, I'll turn that on later and do one thing at a time. Uh, what was I looking for? Oh, yeah, the Easy Neos. I was like, where's the Easy Neos? Should be up, I think. 
right here. Okay, Easy Neo 220, that's what's installed. All right, so we have the Ender 6 specified. Um, this display is going to be the correct one. Um, we are going to need to tell it that we have a filament sensor because a stock printer has a filament sensor. Um, I have our filament sensor on here, but I rewired it so it works just like theirs. Where is our easy out settings? Here we go. So this actually would use the easy out V2 enable. Um, so I'll take care of that. All right. I don't really like doing this stuff live because I am like thinking through here. <laughs> Maybe I'll split this up. What do you guys think? Should I just split this up into two different, uh, two different videos? Get the firmware done because this is going to be really boring. I, I just realized that. <laughs> um, I need to look at the, I think it's on the 24X. I'm trying to remember what the stock steps per millimeter were on this printer. I think the, yeah, the under six is in here. So I want to have, uh, have that set up here. Um, where are the stock settings here? Ender 6, it's 140. So it's 140 on the E for the stock extruder. So I need to have a line here, just like we have for these other ones. And what was it, 140? So 140. So we can set that. I think it's all the other same. Uh, yeah, 80, 80, 400. All right. Yeah, I might, I might just, is anybody opposed to me just uh, popping on another stream where we talk about doing, where I, where I do the firmware setup on here or just coming back? I can always edit this video or repost it. You know what I mean? Because I, f I like doing this stuff offline. I don't want to make this video super long because then people complain about it. <laughs> you guys be surprised about the stuff people complain about. All right, Ender 6. And then I think that is a core YX setting. I got to double check. I'm looking at this. This is our firmware for the stock board, and I believe it is a core YX. So I do, I do look at things like this for a baseline. It may not always work, but it gets me to most of the way I need to be. I don't want to do the DIY config. There's going to be no reason to do the DIY config um, since I'm literally doing the firmware right now to uh, get it all working. All right, so I just want to compare here. Well, this I'll have to check. I think, I think this is going to be... the same setup as the Ender 2 Pro, although I don't remember if our board has the same motor default direction uh, based on what true or false is set. We're going to find out. I think I, this is actually good enough to get most of the way there. So let's see if I get any compile errors. I do need to have it. So I think in the, the, the stock board firmware, I have an option to disable the filament sensor. So I'm going to carry that over to this config i thought i saw a note in here yeah so i want to add the ldo motor kit options in here in case people are using that um so that'll require uh another setting change yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap this up um and then just cut this video off and then i'll do another one doing the firmware on this if that's okay yeah i because this is going to be really boring um <laughs> Um, just because this printer has so many little like caveats and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, I don't want to bore you guys, and I'll, I'll work a lot faster not talking and streaming. Um, so I'll put this in here. So the LDO motor kit, I think the other thing I had here was a disable filament sensor option for the Ender 6. Yeah, here. So Ender 6, no filament sensor. We're not going to need this because it's our board. So I'll put this in here in like the under six area. 
So I'll call all that in. Yeah. So here's the, here's the plan. I'm going to cut this video shorter. Um, or no, I'll leave it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the firmware done and then I'll pop another stream back on when I'm done with the firmware and I'll show you guys the process of updating the firmware. So we covered the hardware installation here. I thought this was going to be a little bit quicker, um, but firmware is a lot of work. Um, and then we'll pop this back on. I'll show you guys how to flash the firmware and everything. And then I'll have an easy board V2 in my Ender 6. And then you guys can also have an easy board V2 in your Ender 6. I'll also put the link to the specific SD extension that I picked up. Um, I will go back in my order history and find this extension, um, this specific one, because I am going to um, make a little mount where you pop this out of the, the plastic case and you can mount it in the stock location. So um, that will not be done today. I'm just going to leave my, my little extension hanging out there, but that this will be the extension that we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and put the link to that. I'll also put the link to the LCD kit in the bot video description. And then uh, we'll be back once I get the firmware situated. So um, probably give me about two hours or so. I'm going to get it all tested and working on here. And then uh, I'll pop another stream on. So I will see you guys in a couple hours. Thank you for watching. And as always, happy printing. I will see you guys in a couple hours.